Good evening, everybody. Good evening. How are you? I'm doing well. We are, we are Courtney-less because uh, she is home under the weather, so she's probably ill. She may, be, she may be watching tonight, so guys in the booth, if you can cut to this uh, camera right up here, we'll all just on the count of three, we'll say, get well soon, Courtney. I think if she's watching at home, there's no way she's watching at home. Why would she be watching True North at home? I, I mean, I, surely she would be. I mean, right? if I were sick, I'd be home watching The Price is Right. That's what we always did, but it's, a, it's on during the day. Well, this has got to be better than The Price I'd be is watching right. Jeopardy. I'd be watching Jeopardy right now well. instead of this. But uh, she may be watching or she may watch after the fact. So uh, we're going we're gonna to say a message to her. You can look right at that camera right there. Here we go. One, two, three. Get well soon, Courtney. <laughs> what was the message? I said, get well soon, Courtney, and you yelled, what? I think Somebody I, said, bye, Courtney. Said, hi, oh, hi, Courtney. Okay. <laughs> What's the message? All right, Courtney, we, uh, we do hope that you are feeling better, and she's a little under the weather, and we want to see her back here. It's not the same without you up here uh, at the table, and we, uh, we miss you being here. So you're feeling all right, though, right? Oh, I feel good. You're feeling I, good? I'm glad to be here. Okay. Hey, everybody, if you've got a phone, would you silence your phone so that it's not going to be a distraction to us or a distraction to anybody beside you. If you can help us out with that, that would be so great to, uh, to silence your phone. And then, uh, because I forget this every time here at True North, we like to say screens down. All right. Very good. And if you've got a drink, do us a favor and just hold on to it or throw it away during the four minute party. Please do not have your drink on the floor. It'll get knocked over and we don't want to have to clean up spills and we don't want you to have to use your time cleaning up spills as well. All right. So in just a minute, we're going to all stand up and we're going to have a four minute party. Parker, would you like to tell any of our first time guests, we're not going to embarrass you, but in a minute we're all going to stand up and what's going to happen? Well, we're going to have a four minute party and if you are a guest, come up here, we'll have some greeters and get a Baskin Robbins gift card. That's pretty exciting. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, our team greeters, you guys come on up here and get ready. We're going to give you a, bas uh, a gift card just for being here. So uh, come on up. Everybody else? We want you in just a minute to find somebody you've not seen in a while. There are lots, there are lots of guests here tonight, lots of faces we haven't seen, and we like to always say, you can't talk to anybody that you do know until you talk to somebody that you don't know. It's not that difficult, everybody. So everybody in the back, help us out. Let's greet one another. Let's all stand up and let's have a four minute party. Let's go. Uh, hi, hello, how's it going, what's happening, what's popping? Um, I, I, so, you know, first of all, uh, I... Sorry, I'm late. I'm never going to forgive you for this. Okay, not, yeah, sorry. But, yes, sorry. Um, if, if by any chance Courtney is watching this, I hope that you feel better soon. I'm sorry that you're feeling under the weather. Please get above the weather as soon as possible. Um, I also just want to let you know, just to everybody watching in general, that um, I think you look phenomenal tonight. Like, absolutely stunning. And um, that uh, one person that I ran into at the doctor's office yesterday, um, hi. Alright, bye. If you're a guest filling out a visitor form, you can fill that out, take as long as you need. When you're done, just put it back up on this table as soon as you're done. I met several guests. I met a lot of folks. I met several myself. Yeah. A lot of great, lot of, uh, lot of great guests with us tonight. All of our guests are great. Not just a lot of them are great. Every one of them are great. Okay, let's get back into it. If you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear us, clap twice. All right, we have some folks that are getting older. It's time to celebrate our birthdays in the borough. Anybody in the room that's got a birthday February the 25th to March the 2nd, come on up here. Come on up. Come on up. Oh, we got birthdays. All right, birthdays. Now we're so excited to come up here. I know that's your favorite thing in the world. <laughs> Good job. Happy, how old? How old? 16. Oh, we're about to drive soon? Okay, all right, but, uh, but you can. 16. 
16. This is oh. incredible. Watch All out. Right. Watch out. Watch out on the road. I know. I know. Be careful. We're going to sing happy birthday to these folks. And the way we do it in the NBYG is with three simple words. And those words are, you're still cool. And it goes like this. Well, you're one year older than you Sing it out. Let's go. Be. Make it feel special. And you're still cool. There we go. Still got, got it. It's plain to see. Here we go. You're still cool. Come on. Yes, it's your birthday, birthday today. That's, That's why we're here today. Here we go. That That's you're still cool. Big finish. Cool. Yeah. Everybody say happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. Very good. Very good. Happy birthday, very good. Very good. Happy birthday everybody. All right. Let's see. Okay. So since today is Wednesday, tomorrow is Thursday. Now, here is what we do on Thursdays. We normally, I, forget, I always forget, I forget the slide every single week. Every single week, I forget those slides. Since it's, oh, I forget this too. Oh, I have forgotten well, everything. Go ahead, play it. Our birthday party blast from the past. I'm, I'm, my brain is in another place tonight. I'm going to start paying attention to this a little bit more, more uh, thoroughly. Here's our birthday party blast from the past. Let's check it out. Here we, there we go. Oh. Anybody, uh, you may want to guess who that is? Anybody know? That is our own Ethan Clements. Ethan, Ethan was mad because somebody touched the candle on his cake. It was you? Oh, your mom just said you were mad because somebody touched it. Can you, Ethan, stand up. Can you make that face for us right there? No, oh, very good. I like it. Okay. Very good. There's our birthday. Now, see, now I, now I can pay attention here. Now it goes Yeah, through. that's the thing. All right, there we go. So, girls, here is the challenge. If Courtney is still not feeling well, I think you all can go ahead and meet. How many of you are, how many of you consider yourselves regulars? You're not there every week, but you are regulars to Panera. Elijah, you're not a regular there on this night. You may go to Panera regularly. Okay. Some of you are regulars on Thursdays. All right, then you all you all lead the charge if she's not there. And we're just gonna we're just gonna count on you all to make it happen. But Courtney, if you are watching and you are there, we look forward to uh, seeing you back. All right. Speaking of our uh, NBYG girls, we have an event that a couple of our ladies are gonna come up and tell us about. It's gonna be in March called Spread the Love, and I believe we have Kate and Harper are gonna come on up. Come on up here, ladies. A big NBYG welcome for Kate and Harper. Okay, so the girls' event is March 9th from 4 to 8 p.m. in the filling station. Yay! And <laughs> you need to bring a white t-shirt, not like an extra one. Wear, wear a shirt there, a different one. And then um, the seniors are going to lead a Devo, and we're going to have a Sunday bar after. And you can bring snacks if you want, and then we're gonna have a bunch of food. It's gonna be super fun. Okay, we want everybody there, ladies. Uh, yes. Anything else you wanna say about it? Uh, it's gonna be a super fun night, so if you have friends, bring them. If you don't have a friend, bring yourself. Yeah. Bring yourself, <laughs> bring yourself anyway. All right, if you don't have a friend, you'll come and make some friends. Yeah. yeah. All right, very good. All right, thanks, ladies. Thanks for letting us know. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Okay. All right. Hey, guys, uh, Elijah, just take us to the next thing. We're going to move straight on in. It's time for, I believe, our... Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I missed that, it again. That was on there, too. I missed it again. Uh, class of 2024, would you all please rise? All right. Very good. Hey, guys, March the 17th. You have until March the 17th to get us the information we need if you want to be included. Um, if you did not get a packet, then we need to get you one. If you're a regular at North Boulevard, even if we, you're not a member and you want to be honored for graduating, we're happy to, uh, but you need to see us and let us know. we got to get you the info that you need. Uh, graduates, so you all can have a seat. May the 5th, May the 5th is going to be Senior Sunday. Okay, now I think I'm ready to go. I want to see if I... I Things happen in threes. That means I've got one more mistake, one more big mistake left in me. What happens after that? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I don't know and if it's like a three strikes and you're out type of thing. Yeah. So I'm going to go very carefully now. I think I know what's happening next. Go right ahead. It's now time for our picks of the week. Okay, we got it right. All right, here we go. 
Uh, we're going to rate this send. I know Courtney loves this. Keep going. Send it. Uh, I think we have three of these tonight. Uh, in, in honor of Courtney, we'll, we'll try to make it right. Yeah, let's see if we can. Uh, everybody, uh, rate, rate this in. Check it out. Uh, whoa. Got a wheelbarrow. Oh, dear. See? That was Send pretty. That's, yeah, that's, that was a, that was a, that was pretty, full pretty good. send right there with a wheelbarrow. It's pretty good. I can barely push a wheelbarrow without something bad happening uh, from the one side of the yard to the other. All right, here's, an, here's another. Rate this in. Watch out. Send it. <laughs> that kid got the old, uh, we're going to watch that again. He's trying to steal home. He's stealing home. Send it. Do you realize how horrible that could have been? That could have been terrible. You play baseball. Comment on that play. Well, I... He almost lost his head, but I would have been very mad at the kid that was hitting. That's a big, that's a big. You were a catcher. Yes. So if you're a catcher, you're watching that kid. Can, can you see the guy coming in? Hold on, guys. Uh, you can see him coming in, but the guy that's hitting, you, he should know not to swing in that situation. Did somebody miss a, a sign there? It would have been the hitter. You, you've got to know you can't swing if a guy's stealing home. Because if you swing, you might delete someone's head. We can, yeah, I know. We did you, wait, did you just say delete someone's head? He almost deleted his head. Okay, that's a nice way of putting it. All right, here we go. Here's one more sin, y'all. I'm just going to let this unfold. Send it. How they do that? Wow, that's that's pretty good. That was two near misses. That's pretty good. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is a uh, segment that we are calling. Oh, it's not on here. Is that strike three? I, is no, that... I didn't. I didn't make. I didn't mess that one up. Oh, okay. Uh, it's called Heroes. Uh, Heroes Among Us. All right, here we go. This is a segment where we show somebody heroic. You guys, you guys familiar with Bollywood? Yes. Yes. Anybody familiar? Raise your hand if you know what Bollywood is. Do you know why it is called Bollywood? Anybody know? Yeah, why is it called Bollywood? Yes, it, 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 is, it is Indian. Yes, Caius. Yes, that was the question. Was, was, was this like the... This is a segment called Ask a Question, Get the Question Asked Back to You. Yes, why is it called Bollywood? <laughs> because I know. I thought I had the answer, but I don't. Continue on. Uh, it's called Bollywood because it is a combination of Bombay and Hollywood. Bollywood. Anybody ever seen a Bollywood clip? All right. Now, um, the Bollywood, they know how to make it. This is, a, this is a great scene. Now, you are engaged to be married. That is true. Okay. And let's imagine, everyone, let's imagine, imagine with me that Kaylee was in danger. Okay. You're in the forest and there's danger. Okay. If, if she was in danger, would you, would you risk yourself to defend her against, say, say hypothetically against, say, uh, four tigers? I mean, might as well, right? I mean, I think so. I think so, yeah. 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 The yeah. minute you knew. Yeah. Yeah. I would. Yeah. All right. This is from a uh, this is from a scene we're gonna call "Girl in Trouble," straight from Bollywood. I'm Watch of, this hero in action. I'm this of, is gonna teach you. In case here you go, guys. Watch it. Here we go. Girl in trouble. Those are those tigers look so real. Oh, she's passed out. Watch him swinging down. Yeah. Watch this guy. I can't, are those real tigers? I can't tell. Are those actual tigers? Oh, wait. How, how does a tiger do that? You all 
y'all had way more fun watching that than I imagined, but well, I just love when the guy goes, girl in trouble. In the event that I get into a boxing match with four tigers, I, now I got it. Now you know what to do. I know what to do. Okay. All right. Well, I'm hoping that wasn't on here, so I'm hoping the next one, I'm hoping this is right. All right. Now it's a segment that we call Well Played. All right. Here we go. Uh, Matt Weathers is a college professor. Some of you may take dual enrollment classes. How many of you have dual enrolled classes? How many of you go to a college campus for a dual enrolled class? This is uh, from Matt Weathers. He teaches at Biola University. Biola is the Biblical Institute of Los Angeles, and it is a, uh, it's a Christian college in Los Angeles. And he is known for this. You've probably seen these. They've been around for a while, but this one was great. This is well played. Just let it play out. Watch it. Here we go. Well played. Um, you, make, you use this X right here to get the... Uh oh Oh, my gosh. I just do on that. Hold on. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm going to um, search for a solution. Let's see. Video. Nah. Maybe this guy can help me. There we go. Hey. Hey, you. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, do you think you can help me? I accidentally drew on the screen right here. Um, I don't know what to do. No, a little bit farther down. Farther down. Right there. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's not working. That's making it worse. Um, I'm not sure what to do here. What's that? Oh. Okay. That's, that's just getting the cat dirty. That's not working. All right. Let's, oh, okay. Yeah, let's try that. Try that. The cat needs to chill. Oh. That's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, I don't know what to do. Yeah, oh, oh, you have an idea? Oh, okay. Um, um, yeah, all right. Okay, let me try that. Okay, go grab that for me. All right. Move out of the way. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. Okay, after let me move this out of the way. So you can see it Do that first. That's pretty well played. That's, I like that. Good job. That's pretty good. All right, I want you to meet uh, meet Bailey. This is Bailey. Hi, I Bailey. met Bailey in Houston. I was teaching at an event called Soul Link in Houston, Texas, and Bailey came up and she goes, "Hey, hey, I'm Bailey. Uh, you you don't know me." And I said, "Have we met?" She goes, "No, we haven't met." And I said, "Okay, well, nice to meet you." And then she proceeded to show me this picture. And she said, uh, you recognize this? And I said, yes. And she said, uh, you know, see me? I'm over there on, on, on the left. And I said, yes, I, I, I do see me over there on the left. And she said, okay, well, uh, that's me. And I said, oh, did you go to Winterfest with us? She said, no, I was walking through the parking lot when you all were taking your group picture and I jumped in it. <laughs> and she said, and I knew somebody afterwards. I met somebody in the picture, I think maybe Landon uh, Webb there. Um, and uh, she said, and I told Landon, hey, send me that picture, and I, I just want to have that picture, and, and uh, let's find out if, if he ever notices that somebody's in that picture that shouldn't be. I, I don't guess I ever did, uh, but there she is, and I said, that was, uh, that was pretty well played. I wanted to introduce you also to, uh, oh, then there's Isaac Bunner. I just thought Isaac was, uh, this was an, it's an old picture. This was several years ago, but there's Isaac, and maybe you can find yourself in that picture. Uh, this is my friend Chris, Chris Dowell. Chris is in charge of the set for the event that I taught at. Chris is 41 years old. And a friend of mine said, yeah, the first time I met Chris, I thought he was 70 to 75. And I said, wait, wait, what? And they said, the first time I met him, I thought he was 70 to 75. And I said, you thought Chris? And he looks like this. And I said, I mean, he, he looks older than maybe he in 42 but, or 41. But then I found out that in October, it's about a six week process of bleaching his beard because for the month uh, of November and December, uh, this is Chris. And um, yeah, I can see how you would think that he was 75. And so Chris makes a living as a, as a professional Santa. Um, again, I just put this in well played because I thought that's, uh, that's what it was. Uh, this is Chris at his house sitting there and he's sitting there watching TV next to his dad. <laughs> His dad is also a professional Santa, and um, I said, well, Chris, what's the, the coolest thing that you've ever done? And Chris said, well, the Dallas Cowboys hired me to be their personal Santa 
uh, for an entire season a couple of seasons ago, and I got to travel around with the team at every one of their appearances and made several appearances with the, uh, with the Dallas uh, Cowboy cheerleaders. Uh, those pictures, I'm, I'm not going to show you on the screen here, but he, uh, he, he is a pretty, pretty awesome, and he does a great job there. He and his dad are uh, my friend Chris. I just thought that I've known him for 15 years. I never knew this about him at all, but it was uh, pretty great. All right, so there you go. That is uh, well played. All right, very good. Good, good hand for my, for my friend Chris. There you go. All right, speaking of, uh, speaking of that, uh, it is time here for some uh, wild time with our good friend, Nathan Land. It's a wild picture there, Nathan. All right, take it away, Nathan. Go. Um, so this one time I was in line for a microwave and this kid who was in front of me had a, a Chick-fil-A bag. I didn't think anything of this. Um, Chick-fil-A bags have foil and we were waiting for a microwave. <laughs> so he puts it in the microwave, puts it for 30 seconds. And when he's starting it, I realize, wait, they, they have foil. And it starts to spark. And he says, deadpan. I, I don't think that's supposed to happen. Um, so I stopped the microwave, uh, grabbed the bottom of the bag because that wasn't on fire yet. Uh, and, <laughs> and then I blow out what was on fire, as you do. And then the kid just takes it and walks away. And then I microwave my food and one of the authority figures at this place it smelled something burning. So they come over and ask, hey, hey is everything okay? And I'm like, oh yeah, this kid just forgot it. Uh, microwaves and foil doesn't go together. Uh, and the first thing she asked, is the microwave okay? Wild times. Is the microwave okay? That was good. Good turn about the microwave. Uh, we found out that talent runs in the Land family. Uh, Alex and some friends uh, submitted. Uh, I didn't realize we were having a film festival, but they submitted their own video. And they said, we produced a video. And so Alex, Where's your crew? Stand up. You all that made this video together. Uh, Sarah's here. Are the other? Oh, is he, is he watching it at home? Yeah. Okay, all right. So they, they made a video. And um, hey, can I tell them what it is? You guys, remember, you guys remember Landon Webb and remember his Man on the Street. You guys remember Man on the Street? Yeah. Man on the Street was a big hit at camp and at kids camp. Here we go. Big hit. And Man on the Street got canceled. Apparently, uh, oh. one of our interns canceled Man on the Street uh, at camp. It was heartbreaking. Um, but I guess you guys have decided to, uh, to, to revive it or some form of it. Okay. All right. Uh, I've, not, I've not seen this in its entirety, but uh, I, uh, we're going to roll it now. Here we go. Enjoy. Made by your peers. Wild times. No. What? Can't. No, no, you can't. You can't cancel. Due to the high popularity, we've got a lot more funding this year. No, no. No, no you can't. Have a great... Uh, just remember, basketball is fun. I like that one. That one looks sort of like it's got some attitude to it. Do the howling one. You ready? Here we go. <laughs> Let's see him. No, you can't cancel it. No, it's getting... We've got some bad news for you. You might oh, want to... This is actual footage. Um, Man on the Street uh, is not being viewed by anyone. It, no. No. No, you can't cancel Man on the Street. No. So um, we're going to have to cancel the show. Uh, okay. we, just, we just, with all the other videos, we don't have time... For yours. Um, so if anything bad happens from now on, like if it gets canceled, uh, it's all your fault. So just remember that. If the show gets canceled, it's Grey Police's fault. No. No, you can't do this. No, you can't cancel Man on the Street. No. No, no. Why would you do that? This is Grey Polius, the new man. <gasps> oh. What's going on? 
are you? You're the chosen one, Reed. You're the- I'm the man on the street, and I'm walking on the street, and my name is Reed. And I'm a man, because I have an XY chromosome, and we're filming all this stuff with my friends Sarah and Alex. Alex has a camera, and Sarah's got the audio. We're together and we're gonna make this thing really great. So why don't you tune into Man on the Street? Hi, we're uh, we're here at the Glenstone Lodge and uh, they want us to make us a tradition in the USA. Let's go talk to some people. Hey there, what's your name? Richie Gong. Hey Richie, can you tell us a joke? Damn me up for that one, Richie. Okay. Okay, so who am I here with today? Colson Maynard. Hey Colson, how's your day been? Um, been Alright, that's good. great to hear, guys. Cool. Alright, who am I here with today? I'm Julia. Hi, Julia. Where'd you my friend Roman on a scale of 1 to 10? I. Um, solid 3 and a half. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe a 4. Yeah. Uh, what's your name? Lizzie. Lizzie, what is the weirdest thing you've done? I peed my pants during a cheer competition. Who am I here with today? Nathan. Hi, Nathan. What color is your toothbrush? Orange. All right. Excuse me, sir, could you tell us what song you're listening to? Oh, they're kind of underground. It's called Man on the Street. Oh, I love that song. Nah, I'm not a huge fan. I'm uh, the man on the street, uh, uh, and I'm walking on the street, uh, and my name is Reed, and I'm a man because I have an XY chromosome. Dude, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. It's going to be so funny. It's going to be so funny. Oh my god, this guy is so stupid. This is so funny. What a loser. What do you think about that show, Man on the Street? Man, who, who even watches that show? Look, I, I, I don't have time for these questions. I've got a very important phone call. Yeah, Vicky, get me somebody on the phone. And get me somebody while I'm waiting. Hey, Parker. Uh, have you ever seen that show, Man on the Street? What do you think of it? Well, it sounds terrible. Uh, I know we put a man on the moon, but why would we put a man in the street? That doesn't make any sense, actually. Hey, DJ Mike. Have you ever watched Man on the Street? Dan, what do you think of it if you have? Man on the Street? Landon Webb was one of the most underrated journalists of his time. I love Man on the Street. So what do you think of Man on the Street? I mean, wh why, why is this even a question? It is the greatest show ever. Like, I don't, I mean, it's just so, it's so good. Like, dude, I mean, come on, it's so good. Sarah, what do you think of Man on the Street? Uh, I think it's pretty good. I mean, Reed seems to like it, so. It's a very solid graphic there. I like that. All right, a big hand for your uh, aspiring filmmakers. I guess, I guess there's more where that's coming from. Hey, we're going to give you a chance to uh, win something really quickly, everybody. We're going to do a Girl Scout cookie quiz. It's that time of year. Here's how this works. You're gonna stand up in just a minute. You're gonna guess A, B, or C. You're gonna hold up one, two, or three, and if you are wrong, you will sit down, okay? You only get one miss. You get one miss. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do one miss. We'll see how long this lasts. All right. All right, everybody stand up. We gotta go fast, stand up. Here's how it works. You're gonna show your answer to your partner, to your uh, your neighbor, so they can help uh, help out here. Here we go. 
Uh, in what year did the Girl Scouts start selling cookies? You know what? We'll give you two misses. Everybody's going to get two misses. All right. In what year? In what year? Everybody pick A, B, or C, one, two, or three. Hold it up. Show your neighbors so they can see. No changing. Let's go. Otherwise, if you're wrong, you sit down. Three, two, one. Here is the first answer right there. All right. Okay. A show of hands. How many of you missed that one? How many of you missed that one? You got to go on the honor system, honor system. All right, Parker, can you read the screen? Here you go. Here's the next question. Yes. Go. It is estimated that Girl Scouts sell blank million boxes of cookies each year. A, 200, B, 300, and C, 400. All right, three, two, one. Show us your answer. Hold it up. Make sure you're showing your neighbor. You guys work together. If you're wrong, here's the answer. The answer is 200. All right. If you've already got two misses, have a seat. If you've already got two misses, have a seat. Here's your next question. In what year did the organization begin licensing commercial bakers to produce Girl Scout cookies? Was it in 36, 38, or 40? A, B, or C? Make your answer. Three, two, one. Hold it up. Show your neighbors so they can see. Make sure everybody's playing fair. All right, the correct answer is 36. All right, how many of you have at least one miss? How many of you have no misses yet? Anybody with no misses? All right, play on the honor system. Here we go. Parker, take the next question. Due to shortages of flour and sugar during World War II, the Girl Scouts sold what in addition to cookies? A, newspapers, B, shoelaces, or C, calendars? A, B, or C, three, two, one. Show your neighbor. Show your neighbor. Here we go. Here we go. The correct answer is calendars. All right. If you have two misses, have a seat. Here's your next question. In 1943, there were how many cookies per box? 38, 42, or 48? A, B, or C. Let's go. Hold them up. Hold your answer up. Hold your answer up. Three, two, one, and... All right, lock them in. Show your neighbor. Show somebody beside you. The correct answer is 48. All right, 48. Wow. That's... All right, who's still in? You guys, y'all are still in. All right. We have a prize for the girl winner and the guy winner. So here we go. Listen up. Here's the next question. Go, Parker. By 1958, how many types of cookies were being sold nationwide? A, five, B, six, C, seven. Five, six, or seven. Hold it up. Hold it up. Nice and high. Let's all see your answers. Let's see them. Let's see them. Look this way. Don't look at other people's answers. Here we go. Three, two, one. Lock your answer in. The correct answer is two. All right. If you've missed twice, have a seat. All right, we have two girls still playing and three guys. All right, guys, here we go. Here is your next question. Is it my turn? Yeah, you got it. All right, here we go. Uh, the, the Caramel Delight was added to the cookie lineup in what year? 75, 76, or 77? Hold it up. Three, two, one. Let's see it. Hold them up. All right, somebody's going to be sitting down maybe. The correct answer is 75. 75. All right, we have a girl winner. We have one girl winner, and the guys are all down. Guys, get back up. Guys are back up. We have a girl winner. Yeah, our girl winner. We got you a uh, box of Thin Mints right here. Uh, let's, uh, oh, yeah, come on up here. If I throw them, I can, I can delete somebody's head. That's, that's crazy. All right, there you go. That'd Congratulations. Be crazy. Enjoy your Thin Mints. All right, guys, y'all are still competing. Parker, here's your question. Go. And what year did the Girl Scouts eliminate trans fat from their cookies and start providing nutritional information on the cookie box? Thank goodness. Uh, A, 2003, B, 2005, or C, 2007? All right, go, go. Three, two, one, go. All right, we got two different answers here. Here's the correct answer. It is B. It is B. You guys are out. There's our winner right over there taking the cookies. All right, give him a big hand. I believe that's it. All right, before we uh, transition, let's get uh, singers. If our singers the, will come on practicing. and get in place. I'll show you something I got. We can turn some lights up up here, guys, and I'll show you something that I was given. Carson uh, Tracy found this at Goodwill. Carson Tracy found this at Goodwill. I think the people that need to see it are not paying attention, but um, Carson Tracy found this at Goodwill. It says Mission Possible. And I love that it's even got a Bible verse. <laughs> It's got a Bible verse on the back of it. Yeah, Micah 6, 8, a great Bible verse. Uh, Alex, you and uh, Zach are going to have to share this, but you guys can trade it, trade it out. But there you go. 
Uh, nice, nice find. That, that's a really big deal. Yeah, it is. That's, that's, that's right. got to be a really okay. big deal. See what I did there? All right. Here we, uh, here we are. Before we transition we fully week. into uh, worship, Literally. let's be reminded, everybody. In 2024, by now you know we're journeying through the New Testament together. And we've got bookmarks here. They'll be available back there in the sound booth. You can find some around the room perhaps. Um, those bookmarks walk us through the entire year. Um, I, we don't expect everybody to be caught up just yet, but we do hope that you are journeying through God's Word in 2024. It takes about four or five minutes a day to read the chapter. It's one chapter a day. It works out to that, sometimes less than that. One chapter a day. Today's, uh, this week's reading comes from Luke 6 through 10. This week's reading comes from Luke 6 through 10. I, I'm just curious, again, not making anybody feel guilty. I just want us to encourage one another. How many of you have at least gotten through Colossians and Philemon? How many of you have at least followed, uh, followed through that far? Several of you. Some of you may already be into Luke. Luke 6 through 10. Parker and I were talking about this earlier. Parker, uh, for this week's reading, Luke 6 through 10, have you discovered something that you're like, yeah, I want to hang on to this? Pay attention to Parker, guys. Um, so I will admit, I've not finished this week's reading yet, but here's a few of the well, highlights. Well, the week's not done yet, so you're fine. Okay, thank, thank goodness. Uh, so I, I've written down a few highlights, though, um, that, that I, I really uh, like. So um, we have Jesus um, healing the centurion servant, and that... That chapter is really called The Faith of the Centurion, so I, I enjoyed that one. Um, and then we have John the Baptist um, kind of questioning, is Jesus really the Messiah? Is he the one, or, or should we wait on somebody else? Um, and, and Jesus kind of goes back and says, no, I'm, I'm the one. Um, then we have Jesus, um, he healed several people, um, and then he sends out the 12. Um, and then we have the, uh, Jesus' trans, um, the transfiguration, I almost said transformation, but that works too. Um, and then finally, um, Peter declared that Jesus is the Messiah, and that was obviously a really big part of that um, this week's reading. So good. I had no idea you were going to say that, but I'm glad you mentioned that because we're going to be talking about that particular part here in just a second. Oh. So uh, through, through 2024, guys, get a bookmark, jump in. If you're totally behind, you're not behind. Just start where we are, and you can catch up on your own. But you're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. And I was blessed by a conversation that I had with some students about a passage from last week's reading from Luke. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But we're going to get ready to, uh, to transition uh, into uh, to worship here. I want to share some pictures with you. We can go ahead and cut the lights there in the back. And we're going to sing here in just a second, guys. But I want to show you uh, some pictures that just kind of put things in perspective. I've probably shown these before. But it was uh, on September the 3rd of 2003. It's a long time ago. The Hubble telescope began pointing its camera at a very small area in uh, the night sky. It was this square. You see that square right there? The area about the, a tenth the size of a full moon appeared to be complete blackness with no stars visible to the naked eye. Uh, astronomers noticed that that particular part was completely dark, and so they wanted to zoom in on that part. If you're with me so far, say I'm with you. They zoomed in on that particular part, and they said, we're going to leave the Hubble telescope there, and we're going to leave it pointed at this particular area for four months because we know that light is coming slowly. We see light long after it's been sent, and they wanted to capture all the light they could for four months since they pointed it to that square. And then when they enlarged that square, what you are seeing is that square enlarged to the size of the screen. That was that square. You think, man, that is a lot of stars that we couldn't see in that particular, in that particular square. What you need to know is that each dot in that image is an entire galaxy. And each galaxy contains up to one trillion stars. And each star may very well have its own system of planets. Even more fascinating is that there are over 10,000 galaxies in this photograph alone. In that small little square that we showed you at the beginning, these are the most distant objects ever photographed more than 13 billion light years uh, away. The large galaxy pictured here contains eight times as many stars as our Milky Way galaxy. It's so large it technically shouldn't exist according to current theories of physics. And then I love this kind of geeky fact. The entire Star Trek series takes place in one galaxy. The Enterprise, 
obviously a fictional spacecraft, at maximum warp speed would take almost 10 million years to reach that galaxy that we have a picture of from the Hubble telescope. All from what looked like nothing. Uh, That kind of stuff fascinates me because I show up here on Wednesdays like many of you, distracted with what's going on in my world. And I show up with my own set of worries or I show up thinking, you know, I, like, what does any, what does any of this matter? And some people look at this and say, man, we are so small and insignificant that we're really not worth much. And I would argue that you've got that completely wrong. When I see an image like this, it just makes me wonder as the psalmist says, what is man that you are mindful of him? that God sends his son to die and creates all of this possibly to make the point to you and I that our problem, your problem that you came in here tonight with that is so big and all of us have problems we've walked in here tonight that we think are so ginormous that God says, I just want to show you how big things are and I want to show you how much I've got control of and I can take care of whatever it is you came in here with. Now, some of you see this and go, wow, that helps. Others see it and scoff. Others see it and ignore it. I can't control your reaction to something like this. But as we get ready to sing a song, um, at least our first song, the, the lyrics of this first song remind us that I don't think there is anyone else worthy of our praise. We're going to have time to sing a few songs today. We're going to invite you to stand up. I just want that image, this picture here uh, of our vast universe to be in your mind as we get ready to worship. Would you stand up together? We'll sing a few songs together. The God of the heavens, of the, heavens the ancient of days, the ancient of days. God of our Father.
Once again, we want to welcome anybody that might be joining us online. A lot of folks may skip ahead to this part. I hope you don't miss a chance to enjoy the, the worship. Um, and I understand that we sit here for a long time, and I understand that as soon as we get done with all of our family business, that the temptation is, you know, as soon as worship begins, I'm either going to, you know, get out of here or head to the restroom. I know you got to take a biological break every now and then. Um, uh, but I hope that uh, I hope that you're not missing out on a time to be able to worship together, because it really is a time that we can kind of quieten, uh, if that's a word. We're gonna we're gonna qu- turn down all the other noise in the world. There's a couple of passages that I, I just want to hit to tonight. We don't have a testimony tonight. I wanted to take a break from those for just a minute and breathe just a little bit. If you weren't here last week. Uh, I, I really encourage you to go back online and watch that last week. I don't know if you were as affected by, uh, by that story uh, as I was, but we've been camping out in one passage. We've been looking at one verse from the book of Colossians. It's a letter that Paul wrote to a bunch of people in a place called Colossae. It's not really, he didn't write a book of the Bible, he wrote a letter. The letter got included in the book. And the letter to the Colossians in the fourth chapter, uh, near the end of the book, is this passage that we've been spending a lot of time with. And I realize that we have spent a whole lot of time just looking at this one verse for several weeks, hearing testimony after testimony after testimony. You guys remember the word. There's one word. We've talked about this. I want to see who remembers. There's one word that has been mentioned in almost every single one of these testimonies. One word. that is Yeah, what? The word until. Thanks, Alexa. The word until. We didn't plan that. We didn't ask them to say it. I didn't say, hey, work in this word. I just know that every one of these people said, this was the path my life was on until. Now, whether you're 13, whether you're 18, whether you just turned 16, whether you are a middle schooler or a high schooler about to go to college or in your freshman or sophomore year of college, whether you're a parent or a grandparent watching this online or in the room, like, I don't know how to communicate fully, especially to those of you who are younger. If you're older, you've already lived this. But everybody in the back of the room will tell you that their life, there, there's a moment where there's a trajectory, and then everybody has an until. Everybody. I mean everybody. Nobody gets uh, a pass from the until. Now, your until may not have happened yet. It may not happen until you're, you know, 20 It may not happen until you're married. It may not happen until, you know, you've got kids. I I have to believe, I have to believe that your until is going to happen probably sometime before you're 25. Now, are there untils that happen after that? Everybody in the back of the room would tell you, yes, there is. But for right now, I'm speaking to those of you that are sitting in these chairs up here. I'm trying, youth ministry is really about trying to prepare you for your until. Does that make sense, everybody? Youth ministry is trying to prepare you so that when that moment happens, you are maybe not sitting in church, you're not on a retreat, and you go, oh, oh, wait a minute. This this is that moment we talked about. This is one of those moments. And and I'm just going to tell you right now, you're until, um, I don't want to get a show of hands from people in the back of the room. That's not a fair question to ask. Uh, Because I can't speak for everybody, but I can tell you, untils are sometimes small and insignificant moments, like we've heard. Justin Peach gets told, you should be an intern, or somebody invites somebody to come to church on a Wednesday night or to a Wednesday night Devo, or somebody says, hey, I really think you should go on this retreat with us, or somebody decides to leave a Bible on a table at a coffee shop. Most of the untils, many of the untils that you all heard about are simple, small moments. But you also need to be prepared for an until that is, that is big and painful and is often uh, pretty frightening. Sometimes your until is, is, um, is not pleasant. And so all we're trying to, somebody asked me in, in uh, I was in, in Texas, as I mentioned, and somebody, a younger youth minister said, hey, you've done youth ministry for a long time. What is youth ministry about? And I said, youth ministry is really a, about preparing someone for their until. 
And, and youth ministry is, is really just trying to get people to realize, to, to live to that moment and then go, okay, I, I recognize and I know what to do here. Um, and those until moments can be, they can, they can be frightening. This passage, Paul is in prison, he's writing from jail, and he says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should, and then be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity, and let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. That's a verse by now you should have at least almost committed to memory or written down somewhere or write it out, put it on a note card and stick it on your mirror somewhere where you're going to see it. Because I've been joining you in what I've called you to do, and that is to pray for opportunities, just to, to pray for opportunity. I don't know that I have time to share one that, that happened uh, at the airport in Houston. I'm hoping to get to that, but uh, there's other things that I want to make sure that, that we hit. Uh, many of you were blessed by the story that we share with Lucy and with Kyle. Again, I'm not going to rehash the story, but if you want to go and listen to it, if you really want to be affected, it's a powerful story. I didn't know them until I saw their story on Facebook, and I said, would you just come and share your story with us? And you can hear that entire testimony last week. There was an until moment, and I loved how Lucy, Lucy did such a great job. If you have a friend, and you're really trying to reach a friend of yours, and you're like, I don't know what to do, I would just challenge you to say, hey, just sit down and watch this with me, because Lucy described, I had one foot in and one foot out. She said, I was going to church, but I was also living in the party culture. And she said, I was, I just, I was, I was trying to live in both worlds um, until, she says, until this moment when my prayer for a Bible is answered and I get a copy and I get a hold of this Bible. Make the most of every opportunity. I don't know what opportunity some of you have had, but I'll tell you this much. Uh, and I think it's okay to, I mean, I think it's fair to mention this. I, Parker and I were walking around the, the uh, filling station on our way either to or from True North. I can't remember. I think it was after True North last week because we were, um, I'd left something up here. I wanted to bring it back. And we were walking back. And I said, Parker, um, and I'm just saying this tonight because I want to put it on record because I said, I, I have a feeling, I have a, I have a strong feeling that there is about to be a movement of the Spirit of some way in, in our youth ministry, and something is, is, something is, is coming or happening. I don't know what. I wish I did. I wish I could prepare for it, but I don't know what it is. But I said, I think, because I have noticed week in and week out, for the past six weeks, there have been people that have shown up in here that I've never met before, that I've never seen, some of them not even coming with some of you. Some of them are finding finding some weird ways, weird stories of how they're ending up at North Boulevard and they're showing up and said, I've never really stepped foot in a church. I've never really opened a Bible. I've never really done this. And it's happened several weeks in a row. And I said, I just, God is bringing some people here. And I said, I just pray that we are equipped and ready to kind of meet the need uh, of their heart. I have no idea that may be you tonight, but we're trying to prepare ourselves to make the most of every opportunity. Um, I want to see, uh, okay, I'm trying to remember exactly which passage is next. And uh, there it is. I'll come back to that. Okay. Um, I'm going to do this first. Parker mentioned in his reading of Luke, he said there was this moment. And I want to give you what I think is the biggest question. I'd love to make a list of questions that you're asked, some questions you had to answer this week. Um, I love, when I search things on Google, I always, and I think I may have shown you these before, just have a little bit of fun with this. I type things in, but it always amazes me that Google knows what I'm going to ask before I type it. I mean, almost, right? You guys ever started typing something in and pretty soon your question pops up. Now, sometimes not always, but, but I tried this out and I actually took screenshots and, and I kind of put some slides together. Um, I wrote in, what is the best? And, and, and Google assumed this was the question I was going to ask. What is the best water to drink? I, I didn't, that wasn't my question. I just typed it in to see what the first few choices were, right? Google gives you the top four choices. What's the best water to drink? What's the best bottle of water, okay? What's the best Fitbit, okay? And then the fourth one was, what's the best Pokemon? I have no idea how those go together, but I just found that to be funny. So I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some more questions, write these down. So I put in, when do, when do, and I put in, uh, and it says, when do babies crawl? When do babies start talking? 
These are all questions that Google says you're probably going to ask. Most of the people in our area, according to the algorithm, ask these questions. When do we spring forward? When do babies walk? And then when do the Titans play? Oddly enough, they don't. Uh, and so I, I put in, what, I mean, not lately anyway, I put in these questions and here's what, here's what pops up. Why don't people? So I just thought, I'm going to think of another question. Why don't people, and I just thought, what am I going to see? Why don't people like Obamacare? That was the first question, his first response. Why don't people like Nickelback? I, I'm, I was still confused. Why don't people believe in climate change? Uh, and why don't people like me? That escalated quickly. That escalated quickly. Uh, and, then, and then when do? When, when do? Oh, I've already done this. When do babies crawl? When is baby? Yeah. When do girls stop growing? When do sea turtles hatch? I don't even understand how that works. All right. Why won't you? Why won't you die? Yeah, I, I just wanted to stop right there. Why, why won't you talk to me? Why won't you love me? I mean, this person's having a bad day. And if that's not bad enough, why won't YouTube work? <laughs> I mean, if, that, if that's your biggest problem, you're, you're fine, okay? Or then, where is the? Where is the? That's a, I mean, that's a big one, anything here. Here are the questions. Where is the love? Where is the Grand Canyon? Where is the nearest Walmart? Right? Uh, and then who do people? Now, I don't know what Google will do today, but when I typed this in, true story, I typed in who do people, it gave me one response. It gave me one response, and it was this. This is the one response that Google gave me to this question. Because most people, we don't ask questions that start off with who do people. We, we, that's just not a common way to start a question. But who do people say I am? Jesus asks this question. Now, I mentioned this at Winterfest. Those some of you weren't at Winterfest, I'm not going to review the entire deal. But Jesus asked this question. He goes to a place called Caesarea Philippi. Not a history lesson, but we showed you um, that this is the picture of Caesarea Philippi. This is the actual place. Some beautiful springs are there, and then there's a cave. That big cave right there is a cave to the god of Pan. Pan was the god of fertility, and so uh, people would often go and perform all kinds of acts to uh, worship, I use that in quotes, the god Pan. I'm talking, we're talking uh, lewd and vile and uh, pretty horrible things were done in the front of this cave in order to appease the god Pan. And they called this particular cave from, from Winterfest, you remember what it was called? Somebody raise your hand if you remember what it was called. The cave was called what? Yes. It was called the Gates of Hell or the Gates of Hades because it was thought that if you went in this cave, you would find your way to the underworld and there you'd find Pan and all the other gods. And so we're going to go right to his front door and we're going to perform all of these acts. God, Pan was the god of fertility. So they're going to go. And I mean, it was, it was, uh, it's, it's pretty horrible to imagine what's happening outside of this cave. It's known as the, the gates of hell. And Jesus goes there and he says, who do people say that I am? We'll go back one slide. And the disciples, he's standing right out there. So keep in mind that he's standing in front of this cave and they say, well, some say you're John, some say you're Elijah, some say you're one of the prophets. And then Jesus says, but what about you? What about you? Who do you say that I am? And then, you know that most of you that have been around church for any length of time, and if you haven't, there's, there's no reason you should know this. One of the disciples named Peter, Peter answers up and he speaks up and he says, you, you are the Messiah. And Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. He's standing in front of a place called the gates of Hades, and he says, uh, and I said this at Winterfest, it is as if Jesus is saying, anything you seek back here is not going to surpass what I have to offer you. Nothing there is better than what I'm going to give you. And everybody standing there would have heard this and known what he was talking about because he was standing in front of the gates uh, of hell. And Jesus asked the question, who is it that you say I am? Okay, now, in the same reading for the last week is this longer passage. And here's a question, and I'm going to tell you right now, I don't expect everybody to give me an out loud answer. But man, this was a great, con I've had this conversation now three times this week with three different groups of students. One with a D group, one with some students that I was meeting with about working through something else, and one with some students in Texas that were dealing with something. And I just want to walk you through, there's a lot of words on the screen, okay? But if you're willing to go with me, just say, I'm ready. Okay, if you're not, you, can, you don't have to say it, but you can say it anyway. Here we go. Then Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath, he taught the people. And they were amazed at his teaching because his words had authority. 
And in the synagogue, there was a man possessed by a demon, an impure spirit. And he cried out at the top of his voice. Here's what he cried out. He cried out, go away. What do you want with us? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come here to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Now, this is not one of those miracles of Jesus that we'd all love to see or one of those awesome stories, but this is a moment that if I had 10 choices of, you know, to go back in time, this is, this is on the list of one I would want to go and see because, you know, I, I mean, you can think or say what you want about demon possession. The movies kind of give it a, a completely different spin and what we see in the movies, I don't, you know, but we could talk about it some other time. I, I'm, there's no way I can deny the work of demons in the world today. The Bible is very clear about that. Now, some people would say it looks like this or it looks like that or they do this. That we can debate. But I don't think we can debate the work that there are spiritual forces of evil at work in the world. And uh, here's what the demon says. The demons, like the, 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 the main demon lines. Like if I were to give you taglines from a movie, right? I can't think of any right now because I hadn't thought about it. But if I were to give you taglines from certain characters or certain Avengers, you would know who said that. Or certain cartoon characters, you would know somebody's tagline, right? That would be their catchphrase. Everybody knows a movie where they've got the, the characters got the one tagline. The, the, the way a demon gives himself away is because the demon says, go away, what do you want with me? Now, I'll tell you this, I've worked with students for 28 years. And I know that there are students, maybe they're not here. And I'm not saying everybody that is not here is, this is true of, nor am I saying anybody that's not here is affected by a demon. Don't put words in my mouth or say what I'm not saying. But I know that a person who is not chasing the light is not pursuing the light. A person who is not walking in that direction is going to have an attitude of, go away, what do you want with me? Just get, get, like, get, out, get out of my life, get out of my business, stay away from it. That's why I've told you guys, and that's why I've told you girls. I'm a father of three daughters, so I've told my girls. You've heard me give this advice many times. I've said, hey, girls, don't chase a guy. Chase God. And if you see a guy keeping up, then feel free to introduce yourself. That doesn't mean I was going to give my approval for my daughter to date the guy. But I would say, if you see, and with the, the, you know, the, the guy that one of my daughters married and the guy that one of my daughters is, is dating, I, I think they've done that. They chased God, and they turned around, and they saw somebody running with them, and they said, hey, this is somebody I want to get to know because we're obviously running in the same direction. Uh, guys, I've told you, don't chase a girl. Don't chase a girl, chase God. And if you see a girl keeping up, feel free to introduce yourselves. Now, some parents, somebody may take issue with that. I happen to think it's pretty good dating advice. I'm not saying it's going to work out. I'm not saying he or she's the one. I'm not saying they're going to be great. I'm saying there is a much better chance if you're running toward God and you see somebody keeping up, that's probably, that should be the, some of the first people on your list. And if the person's reaction to things of God are, get away, what do you want with me? It's a good sign that there's something that is not God that is at work in their life. I, again, I, I mean, this it, is pretty simple, I think. And so then I love what happens. I mean, this, the, you know, there's a demon that's talking. I don't know what a demon sounds like. I, I can't say I've ever heard a demon. Um, I know that I've seen students that I thought that person, that is not them. They're making choices or they're doing things that are not them. Um, and, you know, I, again, I know these are really, really strange topics, but we see it in scripture. I know it's happening here. And then Jesus says this, I love it. Jesus just turns around and he says, be quiet. And he says it sternly. He doesn't give the Obi-Wan Kenobi, these aren't the droids you're looking for kind of hand wave. He says, be quiet. I don't know what he said or what it looked like. If he turned around to the guy and he looked at the guy, not insinuating, Eli, that you're demon-possessed, um, but he turns to the guy, and Jesus is walking, and he turns around, and he walks back to the guy, and he stops, and he says, shut up. Now, if kids are watching at home online, we can't say that. Jesus can say it to demons. You can't say it to other people. But he says, cut it out. 
Then Jesus says, come out of him. And then it says, the demon threw the man down before them all, and he came out without injuring him. All the people were amazed, and they said to each other, what words these are, with authority and power, he gives orders to impure spirits, and they come out. And just like in Acts, what what happens, everybody? And the word of God spread. I love, I love that that verse is there. Now, here's the question. Here's the question I ask. I'm talking to a girl with her, some of her friends that pull me aside in Houston. And they say, can we talk to you? It's during this. The session's over. People are milling about the, the auditorium where we were. And we step off to the side. And she says, I can't share these things with my youth you know, group or my youth leaders because I just don't want them to know these things. But, and she begins to talk about some things that are, that are going on. And I mean, it is, it is loud in her mind. She's given me so many lies that she's listening to about herself. And I don't know this person, but I see in her eyes what I see in some of you because I I know you all better. And I can tell sometimes when you're not being you or when something's not right, it's just more obvious. I don't have any special powers. I just, you know, those of us that love you, we can see, we can see you're not the person that I normally see. Like something's not right. It may just be that you ate something bad. It may just be that you don't like the way that, you know, your outfit looks or your hair looks or something, something minor is going on. But, for, but I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about something so loud is going on and it's so loud in your, in your mind. And, and I just asked this girl, she was telling me all this and I, I, I just, we, we went to this passage and I, and I showed her our bookmark and I said, hey, our teens are reading through the New Testament. She goes, okay, that's great. Good for y'all. And then I said, and our reading this week is Luke, uh, Luke 6 through 10. That's going to be our reading for this week. I said, but last week it was Luke 1 through 5. And she said, okay. And I said, and right here in Luke, I believe this is in Luke 4. I said, here's this moment where Jesus has got this guy. And this guy is, is, is yelling, God, stay away. What do you want with me? And Jesus says, be quiet. I said, are there things in your heart? Are there things going on that you, that you need Jesus to just say, be quiet? She said, what do you mean? I said, I think there are some lies that you're listening to that you need, you, you just need Jesus to come in and say, be quiet, like just cut it out. Not to you, but to whatever lie the enemy is whispering to you. Because, um, would you be willing to help me out a second? I can you stand up here a second, Lila Beth? I've not prepared to act this out. I don't want to make this uh, awkward or goofy. But if this, if this girl is represented by Lila Beth and the enemy is represented by me and the enemy is walking around with her and the enemy is whispering things and saying, see that girl over there? She doesn't like you. See them over there? They're laughing at you. See them back there? They knew what you did last week. See that guy over there? That guy doesn't trust you. See your mom and dad over there? They don't believe you. Would you see that teacher over there? That teacher really thinks you're a loser. See those people over there? They're never going to invite you. And the enemy is always whispering. And if you're walking through life hearing all of these things all the time. I asked this girl, I said, do, like, do you need Jesus just to come up and just, just to say to something in your, in your life, be quiet? And she said, yes. And I said, okay, then what, what is it that needs to be silenced? And she said, what do you mean? I said, what is the thing that gets so loud in your head that you need it to be silenced? You can have a seat. I don't want to make you feel any more awkward. And she looked down at the ground and she said, I can never be forgiven for, and then she filled in the blank. I said, okay. I said, you realize that is a lie from, not from God. It's a lie from the enemy that is telling you this, this lie. And she said, but I hear it all the time. And I said, okay, then, then, then you need Jesus to come in and say, be quiet. Just be quiet. And so as I'm reading through the New Testament, you, you, know, you say, oh, Skid, why do you give us the bookmarks? You're making us feel bad about we're all, you know, we're not keeping up. We're, we're, we're bad students. No, 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 no. I don't want anybody to feel guilty for not reading. Don't ever hear that. If you ever hear me say, you've not caught up, you failed Bible class, that is not it at all. What I'm saying is, if you're not caught up, you are going to be vulnerable to some lie and it's going to get louder. And, and this is the only way to get it to be quiet is to put the word of God into your heart. Scripture says... Scripture says, how can a young man or young woman keep their heart pure? And it's by putting the word of God into their heart. Right before Luke chapter 4, this will be no surprise to you, comes Luke chapter 3. See how easy that was? Um, And um, actually, I made a mistake. Right before Luke chapter 4, the passage that we're looking at is a few verses in the same chapter. It's not in Luke 3. It's actually in Luke 4 is Jesus is taken out into the wilderness. Now, I don't find it any surprise that Luke puts these two stories together. 
Because Jesus is taken out into the wilderness and Satan tempts him three different times. And those of you that have been to Bible school or VBS, you know the stories. If you don't, then guess what? Do your reading. You'll find out. I don't have time to walk through it here. But all three times when Satan whispers something to Jesus, if you really are the son of God, and by the way, he's going to do the same thing. The enemy's going to do the same thing to Lila Beth that he does to Jesus. He's going to say, if, if God really loves you, if you're really liked by God, if you're really so good, he's going to always question your identity. And he's going to make you question it. And you know, if you're questioning your identity, that's a lie that comes from the enemy. It never comes from God. God's made it clear. God's made it clear you are spoken for. God has made it clear you are a child of mine. There's nothing that could separate you from my love. It's all in there. You go, well, I didn't know that. That's why we're trying to get you to read through the New Testament. Not because I want you to check all the, all the Bible chapters off. I want you to learn to believe these things that are true about you. Because some of you aren't believing it when I tell you. Or you're not believing it when a guy or girl or mom or dad tells you. And... and you don't have to believe us. You shouldn't believe everything that we tell you because we're humans, but you should believe what God tells you. And Jesus says, when Satan comes and says, if you're really the son of God, do this. And Jesus says, it is written. And he quotes scripture to him. And I'm telling you guys, the only way some of you are going to quiet and silence your anxiety. I had two other students that came to me and said, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I am paralyzed by um, anxiety in my life. And I said, okay, then then you need to pray that God will, that Jesus will say, be quiet. Just be quiet. Not that you're hearing voices, but if you're hearing these lies, some of you, and I would challenge you to go home tonight and write down the lie, whatever you want, write down the lie that you need to be, that you need to have quietened. And you can put it in your journal. Nobody's got to see it. There may be a time when we all sit and if you want to, some of you can share yours. I would love for some brave students to say, I'll tell you the lie that I want Satan to say, be quiet. And you can speak the lie and everybody here can say, be quiet. As if to, you know, let you hear Jesus. Okay, I know I'm getting a little ramped up, but I just, my heart broke for this person because it's, what they're listening to is clearly, is clearly a lie. And I told this girl, I said, you think you have a problem and your problem needs a solution. You have a problem that you think needs a solution. Now, um, there was another author that came up with this phrase. I did, this, is not, this is not my phrase, but I, I love this. What you don't have what you have is not a problem. Colson, can I use you for example? Colson says, hey, Skid, I got this problem, and I really need you to help me figure it out. And I say, Colson, what, you, know, so, you don't have a problem that needs a solution. What you have is a path that needs a new direction. So some of you tonight, if, I, if you were to write down your biggest problem in your life, There'd be all kinds of stuff. I got a problem with my mom. I got a problem with what my parents did. I got a problem with the way this guy's girl is treating me. I got a problem with this. And they are problems. They are, those are, those are they're situations that are unpleasant. But if you say it's a problem that needs a solution, I would say maybe, maybe it's a path that needs a different direction. That problem is not going to find a solution. It's a path that needs a different direction. Because as, as you know, we hear all the time, your direction determines your destination. Where you are walking determines where you're going to end up. Okay, so um, I want to read one thing to you, and then I want to show you a, a clip, and then we'll be done. I think we get, uh, can do this. C.S. Lewis, has, uh, um, he wrote the Chronicles of Narnia. Guys, right, you familiar with that? He writes the Chronicles of Narnia, and there's a book uh, called The Silver Chair. It's not the most exciting of all the Chronicles of Narnia, but there's a great moment in the Chronicles of Narnia in The Silver Chair where there's a young girl whose name is uh, Jill, Jill Pohl. Jill's a character, not one of the, uh, the, the, uh, the Pevensey children that you're familiar with from all of the other uh, Chronicles of Narnia. But Jill is in this book, and, and I'm going to read to you uh, what happens here. It says that um, Jill falls asleep, and she wakes up in, into a, uh, in, in a forest. And then finally, she's so thirsty, she hears the sound of a stream in the distance. And she goes to find the source of the stream so that she can drink, and she sees a large lion. Those of you that know the Chronicles of Narnia know we're talking about Aslan, the lion, who represents Christ. She waits until she's nearly crazed from thirst because she's scared to death that there's a lion that is in front of this stream. Everybody with me so far? Say, I got it. And then here's straight from the book. Suddenly, the lion spoke. If you are thirsty, you may drink. Jill is startled, and she holds back. Are you not thirsty, said the lion? I'm dying of thirst, said Jill. Then drink, said the lion. 
May I, could I, would you mind going away while I do? Said Jill. The lion answered this only by a look and a very low growl. And just as Jill gazed at its motionless bulk, she realized that she might as well have asked the whole mountain to move aside for her convenience. The delicious rippling noise of the stream was driving her near frantic because she was so thirsty. Will you promise not to do anything to me if I come? I make no promise, said the lion. Jill was so thirsty now that without noticing it, she had come a step nearer. Do you devour children, she said. I have swallowed up boys and girls, women and men, kings and emperors, cities and realms, said the lion. It didn't say this as if it were boasting, nor as if it were sorry, nor as if it were angry. It just said it. Well, then I dare not come and drink, said Jill. Then you will die of thirst, said the lion. Oh, dear, said Jill, coming another step nearer. I suppose I must go and look for another stream then. Does anybody know the response of Aslan to this comment? Somebody does, I'm sure. Jill says, then I'm going to go and find another stream. And I love this line. There is no other stream. There is no other stream. Um, I'm going to save the, the, there's a video I was going to show, but I want to show it next week. And this may be the week to show it. There may be people here who need to see it. And I always trust that the spirit's going to work something out. If I don't have time for it, it may be because God's saying, no, it needs to be shown next week. So I'll just close with this picture that a, a, somebody drew. It was fan art. Somebody drew this, entered a contest. And I love this picture of Jill looking up at the lion and she's got a look in her eyes that's a little bit terrified and a little bit scared. She's not yet quite comfortable that she can do this, but she's so thirsty that she says, if this is the only stream, I'm going to drink from here, but I've got my eyes on you. The demons say, go away. What do you want with us? And here's a girl who says, I'm willing to drink from this stream because there is no other stream. We've looked at several passages from Scripture tonight, all from our reading of, for this week, by the way. All these things are found there. And I really wanted to show a, a short clip, but I, I, I need to wait until next week to be fair to everybody here. So we'll do that. So I invite you to come back next week because I, I want you to be able to see the short clip that illustrates better than anything I can show you what it means to make the most of every opportunity. We have some more testimonies on the way. Um, But the last thing I would say to you tonight is that that some of you in in the room are, are like this young girl in Houston, is that you are terrified because everything you're trying in life is not working out. Or maybe you think it's working out fine. And your attitude is, God, stay away from me. What do you want with me? And I'm just telling you, if, you're, if, if that's your line, if that's what your heart is saying, I, I just don't think, that's, I don't think that's coming from God. And I would encourage you to take whatever it is. So I'm going to ask you as I pray, I'm just going to ask you to close your eyes. We're going to close this way tonight. Just close your eyes if you're comfortable. I can't make you, but I can invite you to close your eyes. And I'm just going to give you a moment to think of what is is it that the enemy stands beside you and whispers and continues to whisper so loud that you often can't hear God say, you are my child whom I love and in you I am well pleased. I'm not even going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to make any type of physical movement. I just want you to like, what's the lie? I know what the lie is for me. And I'll even tell you what mine is, and then you can have the courage to maybe tell somebody yours. For me, the enemy shows up every every true north, and on my way over here, he whispers, nobody in that room cares. The enemy whispers, nobody's going to listen to you. Nobody nobody believes it. They may sit quietly and listen, but when they leave, they're going to do what they very darn well want to do because they're listening to me 
and not you. And it's not me that I want you to listen to. I just happen to be the donkey that God is speaking through at the moment. Because thankfully, he still speaks through donkeys. Um, and so I'm not tempted to go out and, you know, get drunk tonight. That, that Satan doesn't whisper that to me. He's not going to whisper me to go out and, and, and get high with my friends. That's just not, at 52, it's still a temptation for plenty of people my age. But that right now, that's not what Satan says to me. But what he says to me is, those, those teens don't care. And so I'm thankful for those of you that, that do, because you, you, you're the ones that say to that voice, hey, be quiet. The way I watch some of you worship, the way some of you pray, the way some of you just talk to one another, the way you treat guests, the way you treat the person that nobody wants to sit with, the way you treat the people that are invisible at their schools, all of that is a way of silencing that lie that the enemy tells me, and I'm thankful for you. But what is it for you that the enemy is saying so loudly that you can't hear the voice of God? And let's pray now, and we'll close out tonight. God, my prayer is really simple tonight. Because right now on the hearts of every single student and maybe adult in this room is a phrase or a lie that they are hearing in their head that is so loud and they hear it over and over and over. And it may be 10 of them, 10 lies. It may be, it may be hundreds or more. And so God, my prayer is, is that just for one day you can let these teens know what it's like if that just goes quiet. As surprisingly this room just did. I was not expecting that. That God, as you, as you make, just make it quiet so that just for a moment they might hear you over that lie. That's, that's all I know to pray. And it's the simplest prayer I can pray. And it's through the name of Jesus, the one who silences the, the enemy and, and quiets demons with his voice and commands them to come out. God, I just ask that you do that because I can't do that for the life of somebody in this room and do it for a lot of somebody's. And it's through him that we pray and we say together. Amen. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you all. Um, go in peace. Go in peace. Be careful. Oh, oh, oh. You are my true